Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be trying to answer the question, is a professional qualification worth it? And to do that, I've got a very special guest to help me out. Drum roll please. prospects.ac.uk professional qualifications are vocational training courses that relate to a specific industry or career path they're issued by a professional body and that professional body will regulate and set the exams and they're usually studied for after completing a university degree and they're very tough they are they're not the easy option they're essential for some jobs but not for others careers you might see people get professional qualifications in include accounting engineers actuaries lawyers any others HR. HR, management, there's so many different professional qualifications that you can get, lots of different professional bodies out there. My mum is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants England and Wales, is that right? Yeah, or FCA for sure. She qualified back in 1992. She's got years and years of experience working as an accountant. Anything else to share? Um, not really. Okay. <laughs> And then there's me, some of you might know this, I am a student of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. So I am studying to become a fellow of the IFOA, but I only entered the actuarial profession nine months ago. So I am really fresh into my career. So I've got a series of questions that I'm gonna ask my mum about her career, her experience getting a professional qualification, and I'll chip in with a few of my experiences so far too. Question one is what made you decide to get a professional qualification well i suppose going back it's a long time ago but i um, left school and i decided to do a business studies degree i did a maths a level and i was quite interested in business so i did a four year what they called then a four year sandwich course which had two periods of industrial training and during one of those periods i worked for a firm of account chartered accountants called Arthur Young. So I spent six months and I quite enjoyed that. And um, my business studies degree was quite a broad sort of general business studies degree, but I did specialise in the finance options towards the tail end of my degree and I quite enjoyed that. So I sort of came to the end of my degree and thought, what, what do I want to do? I had decided at that point that actually I did want to be an accountant. I ended up being offered a training contract with a firm of accountants called Hodgson MP. Basically these firms allow you to work, a bit like Page, is, is sort of working and then doing your exams alongside a sort of a, a contract. So it's a three year three year contract. Interesting. So Ma did not know going into her degree that she wanted to be an accountant. No. It was while you were at university that you thought, right, that's what I want to do next. I think so, yeah. I was also very much encouraged by my parents to get a professional qualification. My father studied, he was a civil engineer. So, you know, it was encouragement also from my parents that I suppose drove me down the, that route. I can relate to that. My parents said I should <laughs> get a professional qualification. If you are training to be an actuary in the UK, the professional body that you will do your exams with is the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. It's a much smaller profession than accounting. A lot less people are in the profession, so there's not as many professional bodies. You can do actuarial work without studying to become a qualified actuary, but there are drawbacks later down the line. You aren't allowed to sign off certain pieces of work and it's definitely easier to climb the career ladder if you get the professional qualification in your first few years. For me, my degree did not relate at all to the actuarial profession other than the fact that it was a numerate degree. But it just seemed like quite a safe option to go for. The other reason I thought accountancy would be good was if at some point I wanted to work for myself. Being an accountant you can sort of set up a ah. business on your own. Mm. And I did think that maybe one day I would have a family and maybe I might want to set up my own accountancy business. And the other bonus is that you get the letters at the end of your name. Yeah. You've got FCA <laughs> after your name. One day I might have FIA at the end of my name if I manage to qualify. Next question. What did your professional qualification entail? How many exams were there? 
how much study time did it involve was it harder than university yeah it was it was definitely harder than university i think it was they're probably the toughest exams i've ever had to sit my accountancy exams i did learn a lot about exam technique and everything they sent us the firm of accountants i work for and i'm sure they do these days to a very good college um, it's called BPP they drill into you how to answer questions with all these exams they tend to um, put so much in the paper that you can't possibly finish it there was a foundation year and obviously I got a few exemptions because of my business studies degree then I had to do professional exams one which was a set of exams which you had to sit all in one go for charters so I always felt we were quite hard done by and then the final advanced exams were called P2 and that was in my final year Yeah, and they covered sort of, you know, financial accounting, management accounting, taxation and auditing. It worked well sort of alongside actually working in, you know, in an accountancy, preparing accounts for people, for all sorts of businesses and doing the the audits as well. Did you have to sacrifice your social life at all? Uh, I didn't have any social life, I don't think. (laughs) No, I did have a a little bit of a... But yeah, there was a lot of um, sacrifice. I've heard a lot of people in the actuarial profession say the same, that their uh, actuarial exams are the hardest exams they've ever sat. Yeah, I and believe that. Yeah. They do tell you that when entering the profession. They say, right, you're signing yourself up for the toughest set of exams. Not everyone gets through them. Well, then we had a lot of you people know? who I worked with at Hodgson Impey. There are a lot of people who gave up or you know kept trying and trying and I think you eventually get time barred if you couldn't get through them after a certain amount of time but some people didn't get through them who I work with but they've ended up I have to say having you know quite good careers themselves because they've ended up maybe part qualified so you know it it doesn't mean just because you haven't managed to get through it that you're not going to still have a good career. Yeah there's some very senior people in my team at work who are not qualified actuaries but they're obviously really good at the actuarial work they do just because you're not suited to exams doesn't necessarily mean that you can't succeed in a profession that exactly normally yeah. people have a professional qualification in i was going to ask hodgson mp funded your exams yes. then yes they did that's the same for me my company funds my studies yeah yeah they, they, they pay for everything the exams the accountancy books you get everything in the college courses they, they funded everything did you have study days or? yes so i did you had a week sort of course at the beginning of the year and then you'd have a mid, middle way through the year you'd have another maybe another course and then you'd have a final course of three or four weeks leading up to the exams and that was quite good having that four weeks so you're not working you're just focusing on those you know final sitting of four or five exams or however many you've got to do all in one go and they were like consecutive days like you had morning afternoon morning afternoon. It, it, I remember being absolutely intense exhausted and to get your professional qualification you needed the work experience alongside the oh, exams yeah. right absolutely yeah yeah you do you need to fill in a very detailed training record the institute don't just want you to pass your professional exams they want to make sure you're getting the right sort of practical experience as well mm-hmm. I suppose I can add on a bit about the actuarial view of all this so yeah. I've only done done two exams so far but there are at least 10 probably should know the full number but there's definitely at least 10 exams to qualify as a fellow there is like a midway step qualification you can become an associate after doing so many exams so not everyone will go the full way i do get study days my company funds my studies so i will get on average one day off per week to do my preparation for my exams and then I'll get the actual exam day off if I'm lucky I'll get a couple of days off before as well I can't really judge yet whether it's harder than university because I've only done the first two exams and they're the easiest ones I'd be surprised if you're right to aerial exams maybe can it get worse than Cambridge I I can't believe (laughs) maybe it can (laughs) I'm seeing what you've had to do at university and the actuarial exams do have some overlap with accounting stuff I've been doing some business finance stuff already learning about how to construct accounts but alongside all the business stuff of course you also need to learn about statistics and mathematical modeling the later actuarial exams become very specialized and they will relate to the particular area you're working in so I work in general and insurance so I would end up doing exams on reserving and on pricing I'll do an exam on eventually pricing of insurance whereas an actuary who works in pensions will end up doing the exams that focus on pensions whatever they do in that so there are different routes 
how long did it take you to qualify oh that would be telling <laughs> i did quite well i got through my foundation and my professional exam one without without any hitch and then it came to my professional exam two and that was a bit more challenging unfortunately my first attempt i failed so i had to resit the whole lot and then the second sitting i got a referral in tax which meant i had to do the tax exam again so i got through in four years and i suppose if i'd passed everything first time i'd have got through in three years but in fairness you know i i don't feel that was too bad i yeah. did I, I i stuck at it in event you just got to keep going and not be knocked back by failures really it is common to fail it is these exams yeah. in the actuarial profession in the accountancy profession yeah it's common not to People get everything do fail i think if anything it's Oh gosh, Basta wants to say hello. If anything, for the IFOA exams, it is not very common to get through them all first time. Normally people will have at least one failure along the way. Whatever way you look at it, even if you pass everything first time, three years, it's a commitment. It is, it is, a, it is a commitment, it is a commitment. And I did it when I was, you know, before I met my husband and had a family. So I do take my hat off to people who do it sort of later in life because I was able to focus really without any distractions. And, you know, I was just single, quite single-minded about, you know, getting through these exams and sort of having a life after I'd finished really, I suppose. With the actuarial exams, it's a similar length of time you need to get through them isn't it longer if not longer i think <laughs> yeah. on average it takes seven years to get through oh the ifoa exams with no exemptions so starting from scratch which is technically what i'm doing i thought you said someone would have got through sooner than that there are people who come in who have done actuarial sciences at university who quite fairly will get exemptions from the IFOA exams because they've already learnt the content at university and so they will typically pass quicker. My goal is to pass in four years I think is the time frame brilliant. that I would be happy with to qualify in. Did you enjoy the course content? Uh, yeah I think I did yeah no, I, because I enjoyed numbers, learning how to prepare accounts and <laughs> I can't say I enjoyed the tax because I just found that really difficult because I wasn't doing it in practice but most of the rest of it I enjoyed. With the stuff that I'm studying at the moment I enjoy it because it enlightens me on stuff that I've been working on at work and might not have fully understood conceptually. Then I'll get to my notes and I'll be like, oh, here's how annuities work. Then it slots into place, yeah, it, doesn't it? Everything comes together. I quite enjoyed learning about how to construct accounts. Quite satisfying when you you know you get a balance sheet that balances, isn't it? It is quite satisfying. <laughs> and it's all it always gives you a bit of a thrill to pass an exam. It must have been great when you qualified. How, how did you just, celebrate? That was fantastic. Went out for several meals, celebrated with friends. Do you actually use the skills and knowledge you learnt in your professional qualification on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I mean, I think you know the things to look for, especially in accountancy. The skills I learnt while training are, are, are always there and you always sort of go back to them. I mean, I think it's what they're designed for as well, the professional qualifications. The professions want them so that everyone working in the profession is of that minimum standard. With very technical career path you need that base level training yeah with the actuarial work well you would never hope you can't just blag your way through it no. you need to have that underlying statistical knowledge although accountancy standards and everything do change quite significantly and they have changed a lot mm. since i qualified you have to remain up to date you have applied for jobs yourself and you have interviewed people for jobs multiple times throughout your career Yes. Would you say that having a professional qualification on the CV is a big advantage when applying? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, there's some jobs, obviously, they want qualified accountants. They and so you can't really apply unless you are a qualified accountant. So it obviously opens doors for you if you have that mm. qualification. I trained um, with the firm of accountants, and when I qualified, I was getting married and, and moving um, down to the south coast so I had to get another job so because I had the auditing experience I applied to work for an insurance company um, in Worthing and they, they were advertising for an internal auditor so I was able to transfer from being an external auditor to then 
specialising in internal audit, so it was sort of like a stepping stone really. But obviously having that qualification obviously got me got me that first job, you know, out of the profession. It gives you flexibility because you can work anywhere with it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. In pretty much any city. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, hopefully actuarial will be the same. I hope so. I'd quite like <laughs> to travel at some point, and I hope it gets me jobs. <laughs> if I'm not sure it will. After investing all that time yeah. into studying, you'd hope that it does improve yeah. your employment prospects. What are the benefits of being a member of a professional body? The benefits are that they support you. They will help you with your continuing professional development. You can always phone them up if you've got a question. So I, it's I, like a helpline. I, well, I, I phoned the ICAW library service when I had a particular query, and they can they'll do a bit of research and email you. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what the benefits are going to be of being a member of a professional body yet, given that I've only been a student member of one for nine months. But I do know that sometimes students get free access to virtual conferences and stuff that the professional body are involved in. That's one perk. I think if you hit hard times as well, the accountancy profession, they've got some sort of you know charitable side to the institute that will help you if you hit hard times. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's a benevolent. Yeah. My other question, and you touched on it briefly, was about CPD, continuing professional yeah. development. So once you have passed all these exams, well hey, you've got your professional qualification, but you want to remain a member of this professional body that you've yes. got your qualification with, Yeah. What, what do you have to do? You have to demonstrate that you're keeping yourself up to date, so doing your, what they call it, CPD, continuing professional development every year, and you know, when you pay your subscription every year, you have to tell the institute that you've actually undertaken enough hours of CPD. So they take it quite seriously, they want their members to be of a very high calibre. They do. They do. They, they, yeah. they will monitor you they will monitor your career. I think the only time you, you can stop doing that is when you retire. You can come, become a retired member. For the IFOA, for the actuaries, there is a very similar system in place. While you're a student, you have to do PPD, which I believe is personal and professional development, something like that. And then after you qualify, you have to do CPD, continuing professional development. My company, of course, helps with that. They will do regular lunch and learns where you can go and hear someone talk about an area of expertise within the industry that you work in. Yeah. Normally quite interesting. I was at one on machine learning in reserving oh. recently. But yeah, I think we'd conclude that it's not a drag to no, be no, no, it's good retaining it, your membership. It's and... good it's good to keep up to date of what's happening. It's stuff you'd want to do anyway. Yeah. It's often quite handy though to have recently qualified people in the office around you. You'll never be so up to date as when you first qualify. I think counting standards, the taxation rules all gonna change over time. Mm. So, so junior members of teams are really valuable. They are very valuable. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what are we concluding here? We think that a professional qualification is worth it? Well, it's been good for me. I, yeah, I don't, I don't regret having done it. And you don't think that I've made a mistake pursuing a professional qualification? Oh, no, I think you've done absolutely the right thing. <laughs> good to hear, good to hear. It makes you feel like not anyone can do your job. Exactly, yeah. You've got something that other people, you know, that yeah. sets you apart. But, of course, on this channel, we are all about giving a balanced viewpoint. And you might be thinking, right, well, we've got a qualified accountant and someone who is pursuing the actuarial qualification, perhaps giving a slightly biased view, given that we've both opted for it. So clearly we think that doing a professional qualification is worth it. So I am bringing in another special guest for you all, introducing my father. Hello. Another very exciting guest today. Really, it's the only other guest I had available, so <laughs> it'll have to do. Um, Thanks. <laughs> that's okay. You, on the other hand, did not get a professional qualification. You've taken a different route with your career. And I thought maybe you could share some details of it and whether you think you've got on okay without a professional qualification. Okay, well, I, I think I have got on all right without a professional qualification. I would question whether I'd have got on a lot better with one. You tend to sort of have circumstances and family circumstances that maybe dictate how your education goes. I had parents that hadn't done higher education, had left school with, with very little in the way of qualifications, 
think I was particularly encouraged to go into further education. There wasn't a lot of discussion on the subject. I had quite a disruptive school life. I moved schools quite a lot. You know, I did my what were called O levels, GCSEs. Now I managed to scrape a pass in most of them. I got C grades. I can remember on my final day cutting my school tie in half. Um, I then, I think, through a school careers advisor, had suggested that maybe I should look at working with computers because that was something that was very new at that time. I signed up for a college course. I actually then saw a job advertised in computers with a local company that were in the motor trade and that seemed quite interesting to me so I actually left the course early and went and took that job up. I worked quite hard, I had a good work ethic. I rose through the ranks fairly quickly in that job. I was very fortunate that it was a private company that didn't seem to place a lot of requirement for higher education and they trusted me to do some really interesting stuff. By the time I was in my early 20s, I managed to start buying a property. I was able to buy nice cars, which I liked, so, you know, it all was good. The problem came when events at that company turned sour. It was a very successful company, but things happened and meant it. The business was effectively taken away. And that was the stage where maybe having higher education might have been quite helpful to me because I'd been working with IBM mainframes. By that time, Microsoft was rising and servers and PCs. I didn't really have the right experience to transfer elsewhere. Effectively, I stayed with that company as it, it went into decline for a number of years in different jobs but ideally I'd have gone somewhere else but I wasn't able to because I didn't have any qualifications and when that all came to an end then I was in a very difficult place because you know I didn't have a great CV I'd been used to earning you know quite a healthy salary and good benefits and all of a sudden you're looking at yourself thinking well who's going to want me as it happens you know I have managed to do other things and I've done all right but I think you know more education can only be a good thing mm, it's a safety net certainly is, yeah. I mean, there's lots of people that have been very successful without it. I always look to the young people I work with and try and help in life. I always say to them, you know, look at Alan Sugar. He left yeah. school. And I think he worked as a market trader without any qualifications. He's been a lot more successful than a lot of people that have got all sorts of qualifications. So mm. you, you can do it. You can do it through sheer hard work. And sometimes you need a lucky break as well. There we go, so don't be disheartened if you haven't got the best grades at school or you haven't opted to do tons of exams, you can still do great, like my father. <laughs> Thank you parents for joining me in this Pleasure. video. I hope that this video has been helpful for anyone who is thinking about their own career choices, what you might want to do. Look it up, speak to people, discuss it with your parents, discuss it with your friends, discuss it with your careers advisors. There are different routes to success. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, follow my Instagram. Bye. Bye.